Hey guys, this is Jim from Bronzeville Comics coming to you with a little bit different setup straight on my uh, desktop. And I'm going to talk today about another way to get comics, except I didn't get any comics. So, as a comic collector, always looking for new and different ways to collect comics, to find comics, garage sales, flea markets, comic shows, eBay, Craigslist, and estate sales. And I've had a little bit of success with estate sales, but I found another avenue um, that I tried today, which was an estate sale auction. So there had been an estate sale listed, and they had a lot of books from the late 50s through the 60s, including some key issues. And I decided to take a look. It was an online auction. So the auction took place starting at 11 o'clock on a Thursday morning. I had the day off. And so I decided to take a look. I looked at the comics I thought I would be interested in, came up with a price. Now, the condition of the books, and I'm going to show some as we talk about them, condition of the books was in lower grade, almost all of them. And they did have, I think, four or five graded books. The highest grade on any of the graded books was a 2.5. And we're going to talk about one of those because it was a huge key. So this was an auction house. Um, this particular auction had a lot of toys, vintage toys, and about half the Lots were comic books, DC, Marvel, Gold Key, and the, as I said, most of the comics, late 50s into the 60s, they did have some comics from the 70s and 80s. And I was, I had no idea as to how the auction would go or what the bidding audience would be. So early on, I was a little bit surprised by some of the um, prices of the auction. It was an, it was a live auction. So there was an auctioneer that you could hear, it was audio only, um, and there was time, no sniping, there was time to enter a bid at the end. So some of the books that I was looking at um, that were key issues were, I looked at uh, Lois Lane number 70, which is the first appearance, this way, <laughs> this way, over here, the first appearance of Catwoman in the Silver Age. Um, the pictures weren't great. So it was difficult to determine the um, quality of the book, to, to grade it properly. It wasn't like eBay where a good seller will give you up to 12 pictures. Here, maybe two pictures, uh, more if it was a lot, but a single issue is only two pictures, front cover, maybe the back cover. So the lowest lane looked to be in a little bit higher grade. That one sold for $240. Um, the next one I looked at was a Batman 181. It did have the centerfold but the centerfold was detached. And overall, it looked a little bit uh, rough, especially the centerfold looked a little off kilter. That one went for $500. Um, one of the sleepers that they had in there was a Dracula lot, or as they had written it, the, a Dracular lot. Um, they put an R at the end of Dracula. Didn't really know what they had. It was um, a number of copies, uh, a number of issues of Tomb of Dracula, I think you know, king size, giant sized annuals, whatever it might be. Um, and included in there was, they didn't realize what a key issue it was, Tomb of Dracula 10, which is the first appearance of Blade. And that one, the bidding went really high really quickly. And there was a picture, I'll show it to you, of the, the book that they had. And that was really the only book you were going to bid on. The rest of the books, you know, had some value. But again, these weren't higher grade books. Um, so the bidding went up pretty quickly. And for the most part, I thought that I didn't buy anything. Just to, <laughs> to cut to the chase. I didn't buy anything from this auction. I felt as I was watching it, especially the non-key issues that people were spending over fair market value for these books. There was a copy of a, a Silver Age New Teen Titans book, not in great shape, and, and it went for a higher price. I'm like, 
you could probably, at least with a little bit of patience, maybe not have it available right now, find it on eBay in better quality for a cheaper price. And that seemed to be the, the um, or just wait to go to a show and find it. it, it people were, were bidding over what, I was looking for deals. There were no deals to be had. Um, so the Tomb of Dracula lot went for $1,575, which if you're only pricing out issue number 10, it wasn't issue number one in there, um, you're looking at a 6.0. I don't think this book was a 6.0. That's kind of in the neighborhood where you would be. Um, there was a copy of Amazing Spider-Man, was it 41? Um, the, the first appearance of the Rhino, which the back cover looked like the Rhino had stepped on it. I'm not exactly sure how this damage occurred. It almost looked like the book had gotten wet and stuck to like another comic and the other part of the other comic ripped off onto this book. I don't know. But um, I figured, okay, that's a low grade book, maybe a 0.5, maybe a 1.0. It sold for $220. Um, and that was the surprise. Now, the big book out of all of them was a graded book, an X-Men number one in a CGC 2.5. And that was a about the grade of most of the books was 2.5. Maybe some of the newer books graded a little bit higher, but the, the book ended up going for, um, I think it was $9,600, which is approximately where books... Um, that book has been going recently. I think it hit a high of 12000 in that grade a few months ago. And there's any reason to believe that it will go for higher than that. I wasn't willing to spend that kind of money on the, that book today. Uh, that's a lot to, to put out. I would have, I probably would have gone maybe 5000 But the thing to remember in this auction, unlike eBay, there was a 17.5% buyer's premium, much like when you buy on Heritage. There, like on eBay, the seller pays all the fees. On Heritage, both the seller and the buyer pay. And the same is true in this auction house. And it, if you um, add in the buyer's premium, you're talking about an $11,000 book, which is just about fair market value. Um, I don't think that the buyer overpaid for that, um, but they didn't get a deal on it either. Now, I'm using one example which is uh, a run of DC reprint books from the 1970s, Four Star Spectacular. This was a book that I picked up as a kid. It was a six-issue run. The books were in middling condition, maybe very good at best. The fair market value, these are $2 books. You could probably get them at a show for 5 bucks. The lot went for $60. Now, if I'm going to buy that book, for $60, it better be in high-grade condition. That was not the case here. And that seemed to be the case on a lot of the um, filler issues, the non-key issues in this auction. Uh, again, I had listed down some prices I thought that I might jump on if that was the case. And I did put some bids in, but I was outbid. Didn't find anything uh, at a deal here. So it was kind of an interesting experience. It was a live auction from an auction house. And the I, I felt that people were paying greater than fair market value. I thought maybe there would be dealers in there who would be, you know, on the for the most part spending, you know, 50, 60 or 70 percent of fair market value. But on some of these issues, you know, I can understand early, you know, late 1950s Superman books paying a little bit over fair market value, but some of the books were books that are easily accessible otherwise. So anyway, that's it for today's video. A um, uh, little bit different setup today. I'm doing this uh, kind of late at night uh, before I go to sleep. So I hope you enjoy the video. And um, if you did, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know if you've had any experience in this sort of situation. And until next time, enjoy your comics.